Continuing on from the previous video, we talk, started talking about the central dogma of biology, uh, DNA to RNA to proteins. The processes are called transcription and translation. This is a visual of what was actually going on. Now let's break down and take a look at um, molecularly, well maybe not even that far yet, just in terms of these actual base letters, what's actually happening here. So a few things about this hidden genetic code uh, mixed up in the A's, T's, C's, and G's in DNA is that uh, it's actually, if you look at the code, the code is, you can't, you just see this string of letters in DNA. In actuality, every three letters actually means something, and every three letters is called a codon. So every three bases codes for one amino acid. Um, and you're going to see a little chart down here in a second of how we actually figure all of that out. But this is very clever. There's a lot of things that are kind of uh, hidden inside this genetic code here. Another thing is that this code is universal. In fact, uh, what that means is pretty much every, well, every living thing that we know about, every, even slugs and owls and snakes and termites and sperm whales, all their DNA, all their DNA is also made up of these letters, A's, C's, T's, and G's. And because it's universal, what we can do is we can actually cut out genes for, for particular functions, genes that actually code for special proteins. And with a little bit of uh, biology tinkering, you can actually insert some of these genes into other animals. For example, a gene that makes, a, that makes something glow can actually be inserted into a rat to make a rat glow or something like that. Okay, This is pretty powerful, the fact that all of this, all living things share the same genetic code. And this last one's kind of strange, but it'll make more sense when we talk about mutations and things like that. We said that the code, the genetic code is degenerate. What that means is uh, even if you make small changes, especially to the third base in the codon, if this is a three, a set of three, um, it may not necessarily change the actual amino acid that it's coding for. So an amino acid can be coded for by more than one codon. Now think of this in terms of uh, mutations. As we get older, we are accumulating all kinds of mutations from UV radiation, from smoking, from carcinogens, all kinds of things that are around us. And that can cause DNA mutations. If the DNA gets mutated too much, then the correct protein might not even get made. And that can cause lots of big problems. But if built into our DNA is this uh, redundancy, in other words, if let's say AGC is the first codon here that we're reading, if C gets mutated randomly and turns into a G, well, AGG and AGC may actually code for the same amino acid. If you take a look down here, you can see that this amino acid, serine, I'll teach you how to read this in a second, serine is coded for by four different possibilities, four different codons and each of these codons actually the first two letters are U and C and the last letter may be different but it'll still code for the same amino acid that's kind of good it builds in this idea especially if you think about eggs that have been inside a woman's body since she was born basically each ovary containing 200,000 eggs uh, a lot of DNA damage gets accumulated from when those eggs were there which is from when the when the woman was born up until she actually has a baby. That is why uh, Down syndrome probability increases after as a woman gets older and so they say you know above the age of 40 it just increases the likelihood but that's because of a buildup an accumulation of DNA damage whereas sperm cells are produced uh, brand new by the day type of thing. Okay so what are we looking at here? All right, three things about genetic code, blah, blah, blah. If this is the DNA sequence, a, a particular DNA sequence, and we said that a gene is nothing more than a specific DNA sequence that actually, when transcribed and translated, will turn into some kind of protein. So how do we actually do that? Well, uh, it's just complementary pairing. So if we look back at my visual version of what was going on here, there's the actual gene. And then we're going to make a copy of it and call that the mRNA. And then that mRNA is going to travel out here, go to the ribosome to be translated, turn into a chain of amino acids. Every three letters or every codon codes for one amino acid. These amino acids join together, fold up, and turn into a protein, we said. So here's what it actually looks like if you're thinking about it. So here is the DNA sequence. So the question here, please, 
transcribe this DNA sequence into RNA. All right, let's see how far we can go here. Uh, let's start with A. So if there's an A, what's the complementary base for an A? Normally that would be a T, but because RNA doesn't contain T and T gets replaced by U, my first letter would actually be U. G, complementary base pair, is a C. C is a G, then a G. T is A. A is normally T. The font's getting a little too big here. Not going to work. Okay. Uh, T, okay, everything's matching up. A would be T, oh, but it's RNA, so it's got to be U. Then another U, then another U. A, 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 U, C, G, C, so on and so forth. You can see what's happening here. Now, how do I actually, this? so this mRNA is going to leave the nucleus and go to the cytoplasm, find a ribosome, and it's going to be translated into a protein. Did you catch all of that? Remember, how many letters code for a single amino acid? That is correct. It is three. Oops, oops, oops. Going to cover that up for a second, but I'm just trying to make this stand out a little bit. Every three letters, every three letters here, is going to be another codon. So I'm just making this more clear for us to see. But you can see here, UCG will be the first codon. And what amino acid does that produce? Well, if I come down here and check my super little table, UCG is right here. You can, you can do this, uh, you can do this first letter thing, U go across, second letter C go across, and then UCG, and I can see S-E-R, sir. Um, the name of the amino acid is actually serine. Uh, you don't have to memorize all the names of these amino acids, but this is how I would kind of write it out, write out a sequence. I would just use the three-letter code, uh, serine, put a hyphen in between. What's the next codon? Well, it's G-A-U, first letter G, second letter A, and then we find U, and then we have ASP. ASP actually stands for aspartic acid. Do you need to know what these actually look like? No. But you know that there's oh, there's 20 different amino acids that exist. But when I put this all in order, this is going to make a lot more sense later. Let's do one more. U, U, A. First letter U. Second letter U. Last letter A. U, U, A is L, E, U, which is leucine. But its three-letter code is L, E, U. So I'm just going to go L, E, U. Now, uh-oh. Uh-oh. What's going on here? Come on. Ah. Oh. Here we go, L, E, U, leucine, and we're going to make a chain. Now, do scientists do this by hand? Of course not. They have computers that can read these letters and tell them what these uh, protein sequences are. But because we know, uh, if you know how to do this, then you understand the concept of what the cell is actually trying to do. The mRNA leaves, oops, leaves the nucleus, and it's heading out to the ribosome, and it's at the ribosome, at the ribosome, where this process is done where these every codon is being matched to a particular amino acid and these amino acids are going to join up and when they join up it's going to create a chain of amino acids and they're going to fold up in a specific uh, a specific three-dimensional way how do we know well later on when we get to the higher level videos we're going to see that each amino acid has a specific structure and some Parts of the amino acid are polar, some are nonpolar, some have positive charges, some have negative charges. And if I know the sequence of how I'm going to arrange these amino acids, then I can make a prediction of how it's actually going to fold uh, with some parts pushing uh, certain parts away, some parts being attracted to others based on charges or polarity. And uh, that three dimensional structure is what gives hormones and enzymes and antibodies their specific properties it's really cool all this stuff uh, starts to make sense and match together if you know anything about enzymes you've heard of the uh, the active site binding to the substrate how does that active site know what kind of substrate to bind to that's because the active site has a specific three-dimensional shape that's actually determined by the amino acid sequence because an enzyme is just a protein so it's determined by the amino acid sequence, well what determines the amino acid sequence what was originally coded in the DNA. So it all comes back to DNA and it's all, it's, it's all about reading these instructions and going through the central dogma, transcribing into RNA and translating, turning them into proteins and it's these proteins that help us do the things that our cells do and help us become who we are. So that is the secret to life my friends and that is the central dogma 
of biology. 10 minutes out. <laughs>